Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. Last week, we learned about God's wonderful creation. Today's story is about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. You can read about this in the Bible in Genesis chapters 2 and 3. The memory verse is taken from Genesis 1, part of verses 26 and 27. Verse 26 reads, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And verse 27 reads, So God created man in his own image, male and female, he created them. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for looking after us and keeping us safe this week. As we learn more about your creation, please help us to share what we learn with others. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's begin. God took some clay from the ground and made the shape of a man. Then he breathed gently into the nostrils of the shape. The man's eyes opened and he began to live. God called him Adam. The Lord made a beautiful garden for him to live in. The garden, called Eden, was full of many wonderful things. Beautiful flowers grew everywhere. Birds sang in the trees. Streams flowed through the valley and animals roamed across the fields. God had made the man in his image to keep him company and look after the world. God brought all the animals to Adam, one at a time, to be given their names. Elephant, he would say, or tiger, or porcupine. But God felt sorry for Adam. None of these animals is really like him, thought God. He needs someone to share his life, someone who cares for him and who he can care for. That night, Adam went into a deep, deep sleep. God took a rib from Adam's side and made a woman. When Adam woke the following morning, he found a wife, Eve, beside him. Adam was so happy, he took her hand and she looked up at him and smiled. God told the man and woman that it was their job to take care of their new home. God blessed them saying, all this is for you. Help yourself to anything you like, but never touch the tree in the middle of the garden. That tree gives knowledge of good and evil. The day you eat its fruit, you will die. God didn't mean that Adam and Eve would die the moment they ate the fruit from the tree. He meant that in time, they would die without his spirit dwelling in them. One day, Adam and Eve were gathering berries to eat, when Eve heard a silky voice behind her. Has God told you that you can eat the fruit from all the trees? The voice asked softly. Eve turned around to see a snake talking to her. God has told us we can eat all the fruit except for what grows on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Eve told the serpent. Oh, come now, that's silly. I hardly think such a lovely fruit would do you any harm, the serpent lied. God knows that if you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you'll become just like him and you'll be able to decide for yourself what is right and what is wrong. Eve looked at the fruit and thought how tasty it looked. She thought how wonderful it would be to be as wise and powerful as God. She believed the serpent's lie and ate the fruit and also gave some to Adam who was with her and he took a bite as well. Then she felt 
a strange feeling in the pit of her stomach. She fidgeted and wondered what was wrong with her. Suddenly, she realized that she was feeling guilty. She had disobeyed God and knew she'd done something wrong. As soon as they ate the fruit, a change came over Adam and Eve. They became unhappy and fearful of God. Adam and Eve heard God calling them. Without thinking, they quickly hid in the bushes. But God knew where they were. When God asked them if they had eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that he had told them not to touch, they blamed each other for their sins. God was sad that Adam and Eve had disobeyed him. He told them that they had to leave the Garden of Eden. From now on, you'll have to scratch for a living from the soil. You'll need to make clothes and grow your own food. Nothing will come easily, not even childbirth, and one day you will die. As Adam and Eve left the Garden of Eden, God sent an angel to stop them from ever returning. So children, it's very important to obey God even now. It's very important to obey your parents too because they love you and want what's best for you. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for guiding us and showing us the right things to do. Please help us to always listen to you and obey your words. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hey kids! <laughs> Today you're going to learn a scripture song for Genesis 1 verse 26. It's got lots of really fun actions, so please join in with us. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky. Over the livestock and all the wild animals And over all the creatures that move along the ground Genesis 1, 26 Then God said, let us make mankind in our image In our likeness So that they may fish in the sea and the birds in the sky over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground Genesis 1 26 then God said let us make mankind in our image Hello again everyone. Today we have two activities for you. We have got a wiggly serpent and we have got the fruit that Adam and Eve ate in the garden. So with these two activities here are the things you're going to need. You're going to need some coloured pencils, 
some sparkly stickers, a pencil, a pair of scissors, a stapler, some glue, paper plate, some craft card, white craft card, and I've just got this plate just to draw around, and also some coloured craft card. Okay, we're going to do the serpent first. So here's what we'll do. So I've printed the template of a serpent. Okay, you can choose white craft card and just simply colour it in and decorate it yourself. Or you can choose any other coloured craft card. Okay, so I've got green there. If you want to draw your serpent, if you don't have a printer, it's best to start with a spiral starting from the middle. So I'll just go through that with you quickly. So you start from the middle and follow a spiral all the way around. Because this is going to be your cutting line when you're cutting out your wiggly serpent. Just turn that round a bit. You just keep following the spiral all the way around to the outside edge. And just keep drawing it all the way down. And then when it comes to making the serpent's head, just draw a shape for the head. And you can draw the serpent's eyes and their forked tongue. You can make any pattern you like on your serpent. So you can do zigzags. You can do circles. Or you can do stripes, any pattern you like, all the way along your serpent. When you've done your patterns, you just colour it in, decorate it however you like to decorate it. And I've added, as you can see on mine, some, some of the sparkly stickers. Okay, when you've decorated your snake, or serpent and then you cut it out and you start from the outside okay so start from his tongue going outside cutting it all the way round following the spiral line okay and just keep following that spiral line all the way right through until you get to the center and then once it's cut out you should end up with this and that will be your spiral serpent. Okay so let's look now at the fruit that Adam and Eve ate in the garden. So what you'll need for that is a paper plate okay and if you don't have a paper plate you can just use some plain white A4 card and I've just just drawn around a plate just to get the right shape. Okay, so when you've done that, you just need to do some circular curved lines on the sides of the paper plate, or if you're using A4 card, it's on the side of the card. And then you're going to cut out those curves that you've just made so it starts to look like the shape of a fruit that's been eaten. And then the shapes that you've cut out are going to act as the leaves of the fruit. So you paint the leaves green and they'll be ready to go onto your fruit. And this is what the paper plate version looks like when you've cut out the sides. Okay, and then I've just painted the bottom edge and the top edge in red and then I've made a core for the fruit 
and just put some seeds in the core and then put my memory verse on the top and the bottom. So now I'm going to staple my leaves. To my fruit and there we have it. So that's what you should end up with. So I hope you've in, you enjoy making your fruit and your wiggly serpent. Have a great day. Happy Sabbath. Bye. Everyone. My name's Orchid and I'm here today to sing you a song called The Butterfly Song. This song is by Salty, you may have heard it and if you do, please do sing along and do the actions as well if you know them. Um, and if you haven't heard it, then hopefully you'll learn a new song today. If I were a butterfly, I'd thank you Lord for giving me wings. And if I were a robin in a tree, I thank you, Lord, that I could swing. And if I were a fish in the sea, I'd wiggle my tail and I'd giggle with glee. But I just thank you, Father, for making me, me. Cause you gave me a heart and you gave me a smile. You gave me Jesus and you made me your child. But I just thank you, Father, for making me, me. If I were an elephant, I'd thank you, Lord, by raising my trunk. And if I were a kangaroo, i just hop right up to you. And if I were an octopus, I'd thank you, Lord, for my good looks. But I just thank you, Father, for making me, me. Cause you gave me a heart and you gave me a smile You gave me Jesus and you made me your child But I just thank you Father for making me, me If I were a wiggly worm I thank you Lord that I could squirm And if I were a crocodile I just thank you for my big smile and if I were a fuzzy wuzzy bear, I thank you, Lord, for my fuzzy wuzzy hair. But I just thank you, Father, for making me, me. Cause you gave me a heart and you gave me a smile. You gave me Jesus and you made me your child. But I just thank you, Father, for making me, me. But I just thank you, Father, for making me, me. But I just thank you, Father, for making me, me. Bye, everyone.